The main accelerator of the Nika complex, which one can say is the heart of the facility, is the superconducting accelerator nucleotron, which provides beams of the required quality and level of energy for experiments. It is equipped with two injection chains. The heavy ion injection chain includes sources of heavy ions of an electron string type known as cryon. Heavy ions from the source are injected into the linear accelerator, the so-called heavy ion linear accelerator, or HILAC. After the acceleration, they are injected into the small cyclic accelerator, also referred to as a booster. Inside the booster, they gain the energy needed to be injected into the nucleotron. The light ion injection chain comprises of a great number of sources. The polarized ion source, mainly from protons and deuterons. The laser source producing a wide spectrum of light ions, from deuterium to aluminium and magnum. In addition, to produce intensive proton and deuteron beams and alpha particles, a duoplasmatron ion source can be used. The particles from the source are firstly accelerated in a small accelerator with radio frequency quadrupole focusing, after which they are injected into the entrance of the main lineal accelerator, known as the LU-20. This is an accelerator with drift tubes, inside which quadrupole lenses are located. The acceleration is carried out by the use of a radio frequency electromagnetic field. This type of accelerator is called an Alvarez accelerator. The principal facility of the NICA complex is the facility where experiments on colliding beams are carried out. It has two collider rings, which operate in a particle storage mode and have two points of beam intersection, the two meeting points. And now I will tell you about each of the elements of the accelerator complex in more detail. The heavy ion injection chain of the nucleotron begins with a source of heavy ions. This picture shows that source on the test bench. This is a source of an electron string type, based on a superconducting solenoid with a very high field homogeneity, inside which an electron beam propagates and produces the ionization of residual gases. And the residual gas ions that are required for acceleration in the accelerator complex are used. These types of sources were developed by our institute. Our laboratory has considerable experience in the development of and working with such sources. And our lab is the world leader in the production of these sources. The NICA project is rather conservative when it comes to the need to be successful. At our institute, only those elements of the facility are developed in which our laboratory or our institute is a global leader. Some technical parts of the NICA complex are being designed with the participation of other countries, which have more experience and more developed technological know-how. For example, the linear accelerator of the nucleotron injection chain was created under a contract with Germany. Most of the work on its commissioning was done at our institute. This facility is truly international. The vacuum system was engineered with the participation of our Czech colleagues. The creation of the supply system involved other member countries of the Joint Institute for Nuclear Research. For instance, the high-frequency power amplifier was created in Australia. It was the first warm linear accelerator in the world. Warm meaning non-superconducting using the transistor generator. This accelerator was produced in Germany and, as I mentioned, delivered to our institute. It was commissioned in 2016. 
The next element in the heavy ion injection chain is the booster, in which the gold ions from the linear accelerator are injected. It is a small superconducting synchrotron tasked with the acceleration of partially stripped ions, that is, those ions that have electrons in high vacuum conditions, which is one of the requirements of the booster. Such high vacuum conditions, low pressure in the vacuum chamber, have not been achieved before in Russia on such a massive scale. It will be an achievement for our booster. Moreover, it will be a superconducting accelerator with accompanying magnets that are being produced in our lab. To provide high-quality beams, this synchrotron will use an electronic cooling system. Due to this fact, the historical justice will finally prevail and the method of electronic cooling, invented in the Soviet Union and nowadays used in almost every country, will be applied in the Russian Federation. The booster itself will be located inside the magnet yoke of the synchrophasotron. On the one hand, it will make it possible to save the synchrophasotron as a historical exhibit, and on the other hand, the iron in the magnet yoke will be used as biological protection for the booster elements. In this photo, you can see the stages of the booster construction. The first photo was taken on the 1st of July 2011 during the session of the Science and Technology Council of the Russian Federation. As Russia's Prime Minister Vladimir Putin visited our laboratory and at that moment a new program to create several facilities of the mega science class was announced. In the photo below you can see what the booster will look like when its assembly will be finished at the end of this year. The light ion injection chain includes an array of sources, a small, high-frequency resonant accelerator with spatially homogeneous quadrupole focusing and the Alvarez accelerator. In this picture, you can see the solemn ceremony of the commissioning of this accelerator. This is May 2016, when the entire injection chain was assembled in its present form. You can see the polarized ion sources, which are, in fact, a complex engineering and physical facility, where the production of polarized nuclei is divided into three stages. It is located on a high-voltage platform. The energy is supplied through an isolation transformer. Its beam goes firstly through low-energy beam transport lines, where it is focused by two axial symmetric magnetic lenses. After that, it is injected in a high-frequency resonant accelerator with radio-frequency quadrupole focusing. To align the beam at the exit of this small accelerator, the main linear accelerator has a medium-energy transportation channel where two triplets of quadrupole lenses and a high-frequency buncher matches the beam with the entrance of the linear accelerator. Leaving the linear accelerator LU20, the Alvarez accelerator, the beam is injected directly into the nucleotron. In this picture you can see the inner parts of the accelerator and the injection chain in the process of its assembly. In addition, the photo demonstrates the CO2 laser used as a laser source.